In the UK, instead of resume, we say CV, which stands for Curriculum Vitae, which is Latin, just to make us sound fancy. Welcome to the Techie Tessa channel. My name is Tess, and today I'm going to be taking you through my resume. I have just finished interning at JP Morgan as a software engineer, and apart from adding in that job experience, I'll be showing you the exact same resume I used to apply there. There are six key sections to this resume, and I'll be taking you through each of them from top to bottom. So without much further ado, let's get started. So here is my resume, and I've redacted out the sensitive information for obvious reasons. But the first section we're going to talk about is the summary section. So as well as my name, email address, and mobile number, I'd recommend having a link to your LinkedIn profile. As I've discussed in many videos before, LinkedIn is sort of like the new resume, especially within the tech industry. So if you haven't got a LinkedIn account already, I definitely recommend setting one up. And then here in the actual summary section, I just have a very short paragraph talking about my personality and sort of what I want to achieve. And now this is also a good thing to tailor for each individual job posting because a tip I've learned is to take keywords from the job description and put them within your resume so then they're picked up during the online submission process. The next section is education and qualifications. This is obviously important because when you're applying for a job, especially a tech job, you need to have some certain base qualifications. So I've got in here my university course and my grades from high school, which I don't mind sharing with you guys because I'm not ashamed of my grades like Donald Trump seems to be. I mean, if they were good enough to get me into university and into JP Morgan, they're good enough to show you guys. The next section we're going to talk about is project work, which is a big one within software engineering, but it's also a very hard one to fill if you don't have experience. Luckily for me, I did a project at the end of high school, which is the project I'm still most proud of, which is why it's included in my resume. That's also another thing. You obviously want to keep your resume up to date, but you also want it to reflect your best work. So if your best work isn't your most recent work, that's also okay. But a tip I've discussed before on previous videos and in some podcasts, which I will link below, is if you don't actually have any official project work, I definitely link your GitHub profile here. And if you don't already have a GitHub profile, I would definitely recommend that as well, because that's just proof to your employer that you can actually code in the languages you claim to. The next section is employment experience. Now I have a few tips for this. If you do have experience, it can be easy to sort of ramble on, but I try to keep to like one sentence, one or two sentences for each of my um, previous experiences, because this way it hooks the reader in and when they come to ask you for an interview, they'll be prompted to ask you for more details about it. So make sure to keep your experience brief. And another thing is if you don't have any employment experience, I would include things like volunteering, things like simply your studies, like how you're dedicated to being a full-time student. You can sort of tailor anything to it towards experience, even hobbies out with, you know, your education. You can talk about how you sort of participate in online coding challenges and things like that. The next section is skills, which honestly, my skills section is a little lacking at the moment. But this is where you can really tailor it towards the job description because obviously I know more languages than this but these are sort of the ones I was looking to get involved with in my job. So just again keep it brief like one or two sentences on the key things you've learned in certain languages, frameworks or even include soft skills in there because those are becoming more and more sought after. I've saved the best section for last interests and achievements. This should be the most fun section throughout your whole resume because you can talk about everything you're interested in without talking about education, without talking about employment, just your general hobbies. Like for example, I talk about my business, which is Techie Tessie. I talk about reading science fiction novels and news articles. So you can really have fun with this part. And so let the 
person reading this really see into your personality. I hope you found this video helpful. Keep the codes coming. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.